Look initially from behind the patient for any obvious muscle wasting, asymmetry or scoliosis of the spine. Look from the side for normal cervical lordosis, thoracic kyphosis and lumbar lordosis. I'm just going to feel down the back. Let me know if there's any pain. Feel down the spinal processes. Over the sacroiliac joints. And palpate the paraspinal muscles for any obvious tenderness. Flexion and extension should be assessed. Can you bend forward as far as you can go? Two or three fingers placed over the lumbar spine will move apart and then together during flexion and then extension. Can I get you to turn to the side again? Lateral flexion is assessed by asking the patient to run each hand down the outside of the adjacent leg in turn. Can you just touch your left ear to your left shoulder? Cervical movements include lateral flexion. And look over your left shoulder. Rotation. And now the right shoulder. And can you put your chin on your chest? And full flexion. And as far back as it will go. And extension. That's great. Can you just cross your arms in front? With the patient sitting on the couch to fix their pelvis, and their arms crossed in front of them, thoracic rotation is assessed. Okay, and if you could just lie down on the bed. With the patient lying as flat as possible on the couch, straight leg raising is performed. Up straight. Is that painful? No. Dorsiflexion of the foot may exacerbate the pain caused by nerve root entrapment or irritations such as a prolapsed intervertebral disc. A brief neurovascular examination, including the assessment of limb reflexes, dorsiflexion of the big toe, and assessment of peripheral pulses should be made. If there has been any indication of abnormality from the history, a full neurological and vascular examination, including sensation, tone and power, should also be performed.